to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know, Deep Adventure Ministries, our creed is that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And we know that our God is, is a great God. He's a God who is also a little bit gnarly because uh, you think of quasars, you think of black holes, you think of dinosaurs, you think of volcanoes. Here in Florida, I'm getting used to thinking about hurricanes. Um, God is a God is, is someone that we really do need to kind of consider and think about and just not tack on as a as sort of an accessory to our life. Um, God is dangerous. Uh, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And God is actually a pretty dangerous uh, uh, person. He is a person, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so uh, there's, a, there's a, a verse that says he is the God in which we need to contend. We need to contend with him. Is the word of God is sharper than ed, any two-edged sword, able to divide between spirit and soul, the joints of the marrow, and to search out the secret thoughts and intentions of your heart. And this is him with whom we need to contend. God knows you better than you know yourself. God is more eminently close to you than he is to yourself. God created you in his image. And then he took on our image when he sent his son Jesus uh, in solidarity with the human race to take on humanity so that while being all God, he became all man. And, and is still to this day, even in heaven, that Jesus is all God and all man in his glorified human uh, body. And so God, uh, God is eminently close to us. And uh, he created you, you in a very special and unique way. There's no one else like you in the world. Uh, it's really kind of cool, too, reading some, some physics. I've come to find out that it has taken actually three generations of stars to create the furnaces, uh, to create all the, the chemical elements on that, on that chemical uh, chart we used to see in high school. Um, so it re- actually took three generations of stars burning, exploding, uh, regathering the, the elements, furnacing some more, exploding. It's just taken three generations of stars to create all of the uh, elements that are in your body. And so you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, but God is dangerous. God is dangerous. Uh, he's not someone to be taken lightly. But he stands at the door and knocks, and he says, you know, if you'll let me in, I'll come into you and sup with you and dine with you. He wants relationship with you. But uh, he says these words, if you are unfaithful, yet I am faithful. I am always faithful. So when you are unfaithful to God, God is always there reaching out to you in mercy and in love. But then he says these words, But if you deny me, I will deny you, for I cannot deny myself. Heaven is not a participation trophy. Heaven is something that you need to seriously consider and and, and think about. What is the nature of God? Who is God? And who am I going to serve? Me, the world, the flesh, the devil, or am I going to serve God? Uh, Heaven is not a participation trophy. The the early Roman generals, when they would... uh, uh, have a great victory. Uh, they would come across the Rubicon. They'd leave their armies on the other side. They'd come into Rome, and they'd have a, a, what they would call a triumph. And they would march through the cities, and people would applaud them and, oh, how great they are. But following behind them just a few paces would be a slave. And he would be saying to the general, memento more, memento more, remember your death. The monks of the desert said the same thing. The monks of the desert in North Africa uh, would say these words, memento more. When they would meet together, often they lived in caves. I've been in different mo- monk caves all over the place, you know, from Greece to Turkey to, um, and even in Israel, uh, where the monks would live in, like hermits in these individual caves. Uh, and maybe they would get together once a week or once a month. But when they got together, sometimes they said no other words than memento more, remember your death. You need to live this life like you're going to die. And you know what's this amazing thing when you have a, radio show that reaches millions of people, you know someone listening to you today is going to die today. So I take my role very seriously. Memento mori, remember your death. A death should be 
as the Catholic Church celebrates the deaths of the saints, we celebrate the death of the saints as their birthday into heaven. When we have a saint's feast day, we celebrate their death because that's their entry into heaven. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So I challenge you, take God, uh, take God seriously. Search him out. Reason with him. Meditate on scripture. Study the catechism. Come to grips with who God is. And uh, at some point, surrender to his love. And once you do that, you become all that you were meant to be. Uh, the, you were made for God's purpose, but you really can't live that life. It's like trying to put diesel fuel in a, in a, uh, you know, in a Corvette. It's not going to, I mean, uh, in a, you know, it's not going to work. Uh, you need the fuel of the Holy Spirit and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to become fully alive and to follow the desires that God has placed in your hearts to rightly serve him. So this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure, and I'm excited to have as a guest today. This is the exact kind of guy I love to have on my show. His name is Adrian Garcia. He's one of those guys that's just doing the stuff. Uh, he has a, a podcast with his brother, Ramon, called Dude Catholic. And uh, you have to live in Southern California to understand that terminology. So, dude, I lived in California, and dude, shaka, brada. Everybody, <laughs> in, everybody in Cali, um, all the guys in Cali, it seems like, they use the word dude like every single sentence. So tell us about that, about the, the concept of dude, Catholic, and how that came to be. <laughs> dude. dude so uh, I, was, <laughs> I was looking at uh at all the the catholic podcasts that were coming out all the all the catholic content that was coming out and I, I feel like there's some sort of a, a revival or, or a surge of of men actually wanting to live out the faith i feel like we're we're done with the mediocrity and and we're looking for something more and as i was looking for a good name for the podcast i was like all right catholic man oh catholic man show already taken um Catholic guy. Oh, there's already a radio show called The Catholic Guy. And I'm like, dude, what's there left? Oh, there you go. <laughs> like, dude is left. So I kind of I'm banking on the on the on the fact that people know about Dude Perfect, right? Like there's these guys that do all these stunts and whatnot. And maybe just by word association they'll they'll come to they'll come to see. So that's kind of like free publicity, I suppose. Yeah. You know, and so that that's kind of the the origin of it. But but the real soul of it is that I was I was looking at it for stuff that that's not already there, you know. I was looking at something that's not the not the Catholic media that that most people are consuming, and and I and I looked at people that I that I admire. So people like I don't know, Bear Wozniak, you know, and, yeah, and other broadcasters, list. top yeah. of the list, you know, um, people that actually challenge us to live out the faith and to be the men that God created us to be. And so that was really the soul of it. The, the dude thing is just kind of catchy. I mean, we are in California, you know, so it's kind of the, the thing. <laughs> dude, you got to see, you got to see his shirt. If you're, if you, you know, this is broadcast on so many <laughs> podcasts and, and of course all over the world on EWTN, including all the shortwave radio uh, signals that they send out, but we also have it on YouTube. So we invite yes. you to go to YouTube and subscribe. And if you go there, you'll see, you'll see him wearing his Aloha shirt. That looks like a vintage Aloha shirt that you're wearing right there. Like it's classic. That that's why I got it. It's, it's kind of new. Uh, I don't want to advertise the, <laughs> the people, but yeah, I, I went to Hawaii uh, last year actually. Mm. And I got this and matching sandals. I was going to pull up to show the camera. You know, but Oh yeah, let's see him. <laughs> At least take your, your your sandals off. Oh, dude! So the the pattern, dude, the pattern, dude, matches. dude, the pattern, <laughs> the pattern, and the shirt match. Okay, dude, where'd you get that? I, I got it at the Gap. At the but Gap? Oh, that's yeah, so I disappointing, know, I know. See, dude. I didn't want to admit. I didn't that's want to admit. so it. disappointing. Well, there, there's it's disappointing on so many <laughs> levels, dude. First of all, that you would even go into a Gap is really a problem. I, I, fell, I fell into the gap. That's what he happened. fell into the gap. He, he, he stepped into the breach and fell into the gap. There you and, go. Then, and then all those great Hawaiian stores in, in Waikiki. I don't know. Where were you in Hawaii? Well, I bought it. I bought it while I was here in California. Like before oh, you before. were prepared for your trip to yes. Hawaii. Okay. Yeah. We got to be intentional. Otherwise you, it's going to catch us by surprise. If you guys don't. Yeah. If you guys don't watch the YouTube version of our video of our radio show, you should go to the bear. Go to, Bear Wozniak on YouTube, just for the sake of watching this uh, during the first segment of these incredible, well, we call them in Hawaii slippers, you know, we don't call them flip-flops, we call them slippers. Uh -huh. 
And it was really cool about Hawaii, dude, is when you when you go to my house, when my, when my kids are all home, uh, or there's company, there's like a hundred pairs of slippers outside the entryway, you know. Nice. And there's and because no one wears their slippers inside because the, all the beach sand, right? So, so there's yeah. a saying, you know, don't trade up when you leave, you know. Make sure you take your own slippers, you know. <laughs> so, so you came up with the concept of dude Catholic, and uh, and it's just so perfect because it's reaching out to. Uh, a young generation it kind of indicates that it's going to be a little bit different and, and fun. Uh, but dude, you're from Southern California. Dude. Appropriately named. So where can they yeah. find your podcast? We're going to get back, get into more nitty gritty of this. Where can they find it? Yeah, well, you can go to, uh, to, I mean, iTunes is done apparently. So it's just Apple podcasts, they call it. Um, you can find it there. You can find it on SoundCloud. You can find it on Spotify and our, our platform is Podomatic, so some people find us through there. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I've heard. Uh, so also Google Play. So yeah, so most, just, the most popular ones are, are out there, and they have our, our podcast. That's just so search cool. Dude Catholic. That's so cool. And we hear that your 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 shows be ranked in the top twenty of of kind of like podcasts that people should should listen to. Kind of like yeah, that caught me by surprise. I was I was checking Twitter because I'm I'm not good at social media. Yeah. I'm just really not good. I, I post the promos and sometimes I'll post something in between. Um, and and I saw it today and I was like, what? So, someone tagged me. The Frank Fryer tagged me. He's a great How guy. Cool. He's on Breadbox Media. Um, he, he's great. And he just tagged us. We've been we've been following each other since we both started well, that, a couple of years back. That, I'm stoked to hear that. So this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We're talking with Adrian Garcia. He is one of the he and his brother Ramon have the dude Catholic. Uh, podcast. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I need to thank Solidarity Health Share for their support of our radio show and for our ministry. They're a great organization, especially I love Brad Hanis. I think he's the founding president. Uh, he lives a life of, con of conviction, and they provide health share that's consistent with Catholic moral teaching. Uh, it's an alternative uh, approach to health to health care. To health, it's like health insurance, but it's not. And members of my family actually use them, and so we're really, really happy to have them as a sponsor. If you go to our website, deepadventure.com, and you go to the bottom of the screen, you'll see the connection to them. So we love Brad Hahn. We love everybody over there at Solidarity. A health share, and then I want to also want to thank Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. They really are the most phenomenal banking experience that I've ever had in my whole life. I mean, it's when I first uh, reached out to them. Uh, Tom Gripe, the CEO of, of of the credit union, I met him at the Notre Dame, I mean at the Napa Institute a year ago, and he said, "Yeah, we're going to sponsor you." But at some point, I needed to uh, finance a car in Hawaii. Remember, they're in Notre Dame, Indiana. And I'm in the middle of my TV show shoot for Long Ride Home. We're doing 12, 14, 16-hour days on the road, you know, bad coverage, zones for sell and everything. And somewhere in the midst of all of that, uh, during a two-week period, uh, Bettina Wolf over, over there at Notre Dame Federal Credit Union just stayed on task and got me the loan. But she had no idea that uh, the credit union was, our, was, was about to become our sponsor, and I was just kind of checking them out. But ever since then, every time I've ever had any sort of need, it's just been quite, quite amazing phenomenal uh, you know experience to work with them in fact we're going to shoot with them when we do long ride home uh, in august when we shoot season i think it's six and seven we're going to be shooting uh, riding with the catholic cross bears and the knights on bikes up there in, in cleveland ohio and uh, also in uh, uh, michigan and up over the upper, upper peninsula and down to milwaukee so we're stoked to have our sponsors and we invite you to go to our website at the bottom of the page and click on their links. I'm really serious. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union can do a loan for you anywhere in the country. So we're talking with Adrian Garcia, and with Luis we have him on. Is, this, is the, this is the guy that, these are the guys that are changing the world. Uh, they're doing the stuff. They love Jesus. They, they, they're, as, Arch, uh, as a, I guess it's Archbishop Chaput said to us at the Napa Institute two years ago, the key to evangelization is get married, love Jesus, raise a bunch of kids. That's the way to evangelize the world. Everything else is just a program, but to but to ha actually be a con devoted husband and family man is really what it's all about. So, welcome to the show. How many kids do you have, Adrian? Three. I have Three. two girls and a boy. Two girls and a boy. How many wives yeah. do you have? Uh, so far, we, I have uh, one. <laughs> one. You have one, one wife enough. and three kids. 
Yeah, no, yes. that's no, that's awesome, man. I, I can see it. I can see it in you that you're a devoted father. I know you were, you were a Catholic teacher for many years, but basically had to move to the public schools to make a bit more money. But can you can you tell us about that? How you go from from being a you know how you developed your Catholic faith and how you became a teacher and what that's all about? Yeah, no, I mean the the Catholic faith has always been part of my upbringing. I mean, my my mom conditioned us. We shared this in the podcast that that before leaving the table, we had to say this this phrase that, that my mom gave us in Spanish, because we, we it? actually, it's gracias a Dios que nos dio de comer sin merecerlo, which means thanks be to God who fed us without us deserving it. And then my mom would reply by saying, thanks be to God, gracias a Dios. And mm-hmm. that was routine, like that was just part of our culture, part of how we were brought up. And so even without thinking it, we would just say it. Once we were done with our meal, we'd get up and put our plate away. And and that was it. You know, it was just what so a embedded powerful, in powerful, powerful statement to have embedded in you. Oh yeah, so powerful. Can you say and, it again in Spanish and English? Yeah, it is gracias a Dios que nos dio de comer sin merecerlo, which means thanks be to God who fed us without us deserving it. Wow. And so yes, the mother. Absolutely. Okay, and then, and then, how did that develop? That developed as uh, as as that mother who showed me through her life that she would do anything for us, asked me to do something. I know after not asking for anything in return, she asked me to do something when I didn't want to do it. Eventually, as I was 18 years old, about to enter into the mouth of secularism in college. Right oh. before, yeah, right before my last semester in high school. And you're in Whittier, California, at this time. At this point, we're the next city over, which is well, Pico Rivera. Well, and did you experience the great earthquake, or were you? Or was that before your time? That was before my time. I think that was in the. Uh, that might have been in the eighties, right? Yeah, so it was before your time. Yeah. yeah so I, we we went back and forth because I was I was born here in Los Angeles, Los Angeles County, and then when I was one and a half, we moved to Mexico, and then we came back. And so it's, it's kind of an interesting cultural experience that I had growing up because I grew up in Mexico with no running water in the middle of a hill. And, and it was kind of a, an interesting experience because by all our standards, that's poverty. By my standards, that was growing up. I didn't know any right. better. Everyone was on the same ship. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, is I, what I've noticed uh, going into situations like that is, especially in the Hispanic culture, there's such la familia. You know, there's such a joy. I used to go yeah. into the inner city and minister to Guatemalans. Oh, you know, nice. all these poor, these poor people. A lot of them were, mm-hmm. you know, um, really de- desperate. And oh, these poor people. Oh, that's not what they thought. Yeah. I mean, I saw a great joy, great devotion to each other, and there was always lots of food. You know, the best <laughs> food. They would bring it. So that after I spoke, they would they would have it. But yeah, the la familia of the Latino culture. That's more important than I think it was Benedict wrote about that, right? That. Mm-hmm. Jesus fed, fed the 5,000, but they only did that once. There's other other sort of food we need other than just physical food. Yeah, and I can't remember who said this. It might have been, might have been Mother Teresa, St. Mother Teresa, who said that the rich have many problems. The hungry only have one. You know, and I wasn't, I wasn't hungry growing up. I mean, <laughs> my mom fed me well. I mean, she's, mm. she's a great cook, especially for someone that doesn't like onions or green chilies, which is a staple of Mexican food. Yeah. I mean, she, she really went out of her way to feed me and, and in more than one way, you know? And so when she asked me as a senior in high school, Hey, I want you to go to this retreat. You don't want to go on because I now want your brother back to in go. California, right? Well, back. back in California now, you know, after, after being brought up in, in that type of environment that I found very enriching for my soul. Mm. I mean, it was because of that upbringing that, that I'm the person that I am right now. And it's not like I have it present all the time. I remember when I, when I first started having children, my wife asked me to, to get the bath ready for my daughter. Um, I did it, and she said, "This is perfect." And, and she's like, "How do you? How did you do it?" And I said, "I, I don't know." And then it occurred to me that I had plenty of practice because we didn't have running water, so we didn't have a, a hot water knob to turn on, and then hot water would come out. We had to heat up water in a metal bucket, and then pour it into a bigger bucket with cold water, and and be skilled enough that it would be a warm bath. Mm-hmm. And, and so I had, yeah. 
Yeah. And, and so I, I had enough practice and, and I figured, oh, that's that's how it came about. You know, because now I forget. I turn on a knob, hot water comes out. I want information. Click a couple of buttons. I'm set, you know, but we don't we don't really appreciate even what we didn't have sometimes. And I think that's one of the reasons why we need so many reminders, why we need the bear wasniks out there, you know, telling us that if you're not praying for an hour a day, you're a poser. <laughs> you know, all these all these things that 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 motivate me to to go back and appreciate what I have. And since I appreciated my mom at that time, that's basically the faith that I had that I knew I just the the stuff that my mother gave me. And so when when she asked me to do that back in now we're back in California here, um, I couldn't say no. So I went to this retreat. I had a negative attitude. My a, li- a, li- a life teen retreat, you said? A life teen yes, retreat. it was a life teen retreat. Um, your arms are crossed. You're yeah, too, my cool. Arms you're, are you're crossed. too cool for school. You don't need any of this. <laughs> At this point, I figure I'm not cool, but I'm too cool for this. And so I yeah. had my arms crossed, big frown, my, my staple frown. I thought my wife got rid of the frown, but mm. but I had it all the time, like the, this whole get away from me look. Mm. And at the end of the retreat, not the end, but the culmination, which is it's a three day retreat, Saturday night, adoration comes by. And it's not it's nothing to most people. I didn't start bawling or anything. I just I was at rest. Mm. And at that moment in time, I was so fed up with life. I was so fed up with all the stuff that I had to deal with, all the stuff that I had to overcome, all the different moves, going to a different high school every year, all the different experiences that come with the uh, with the experience of, of not having a father in the home of of living in in poverty, you know, when I realized like, oh, that's where I grew up in. And I'm focusing on the negative. And, and it took me a long time to fall asleep. But that night at adoration, I felt a deep rest. And that's when I said, this is where I belong. Looking at the Eucharist, I said, this is who I belong to. Mm. And I can't keep it to myself. Mm. We're talking with Adrian Garcia. Um, we, we're going to continue the story when we get back. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. He is, he and his brother Ramon have the Dude Catholic podcast that you can find on almost, almost any app. We want to invite you also to go to our website, deepadventure.com. You know, we have a web store there. It has my books. It has um, the DVDs for Long Ride Home. It has Long Ride Home t-shirts. We have uh, actually the Bear's Man Cave, Seven Virtue Cigars. We have the Warrior Rosaries. We've got a lot of manly gear. Things are for the women, too, so we'd invite you to go there um, and uh, explore it a little bit. We're talking with Adrian Garcia. We'll be right back to find out about what happened in the presence of the Eucharist. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Living a life with Jesus is an adventure. And if you get in the center of God's will, if you abandon yourself to God's will, like my son son Jeremiah being towed into 85-foot surf on the North Shore of Oahu, 2007, if you abandon yourself to that type of power, if you abandon yourself to the Lord, when you drop in, that wave owns you. You're no longer in control. He had to surf that wave well over a mile, maybe a mile and a half, before he could even kick out. At some points, he was totally enclosed by it in the barrel. Um, This is what it means to abandon yourself to God's will. But if you, listen, now listen. Did he experience power or didn't he when he was riding that wave, when he abandoned himself to that wave? When you abandon yourself to God's will, and you say, Lord, I want to be in the very center of your will, you get to experience his love and his power in a way that you that you would never be able to experience any other way when you abandon yourself to god's will he'll often ask of you to do the impossible and then you get to see him work and so abandon yourself to god's will and have the ride of your life what what your life is meant to be get right in the heart of god right in the center of his will which is also to say his love for god is love we're talking with adrian garcia adrian uh, he has a podcast. It's called Dude Catholic. Adrian was telling us about the experience of being before the Eucharist and how when you were there, it was like a feeling of being at home. It's one of the things Father Robert Spitzer says we need. The soul's upward yearning has a desire for justice, beauty, truth. Um, it has a desire for going home, a desire for unconditional love. What did you feel at that moment? What were you experiencing? 
I felt an experience of peace that I, that I didn't experience anywhere else. You know, no matter who I was talking to, no matter who was paying attention, no matter who was responding to, to whatever it is I was saying, um, I never experienced that kind of peace before in my life. And I mean, I was a young guy, very naive. I didn't have any opinions that I held really, really strongly other than, than this place is garbage and there needs to be something more. You know, there has to be something better than this. You know, and dad and I don't want this kind of life for my own children, you know. So so I had that that in my life. And, and so when I when I came to this place, when I, when the Eucharist was right in front of me and I was like, I was able to nap, you know, like almost on command, like God knew exactly what I needed at that point. And he gave me that. And that was the perfect time for for me to respond, I guess. I mean, I can't I can't time it better. It's a gift. It's something that only God can give us. And. And that that piece was what brought me home. This is where when I said this is this is home. Like this is where I belong. This is who I belong to, and I can't keep it to myself. And so that's that's it right there. And you can't keep it to yourself. So what happened? So at first I was just like, oh man, I remember they challenged us to wear the retreat shirt to school, and so I didn't have that. I, I'm an introvert. Like I know you can't tell, but I'm an introvert. I'm a, I'm very much introverted. Radio um, is good for introverts. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, you know, like, oh yeah, I, everyone makes a joke. Oh yeah, I have a I have a face for radio or I have a face yeah. for podcasting and whatnot. But no, I have the personality for it because I had a great oh, voice, gosh. by the way. And a great voice. I I appreciate that. It's especially coming from you. I mean, like like I mentioned earlier, I'm I don't know, I, no one here would know this because unless they've listened to the podcast, but but we look up to you so much, you know, like we are we're in there with you, you know, like we were on this this road for the long haul. Yeah, you know? we're in it together, aren't we? Yeah, and yeah. so we're in this whole, you know, Viva Cristo Rey, and then, yeah, man. Yeah. man, like we're, I, I find, I found such a, such a, such a kinship with you and the message that, that you provide. Um, I got lost in, in the stuff that I was saying. I'm also in there. You went, you went to, I'm sorry, you're also what? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the ADD teacher. I tell my students, like, I need, oh, I need OCD to control my ADD. <laughs> I, I have ADHD, which is a, a real blessing to <laughs> oh. me. Real blessing to me, but it's a problem to everyone around me. But I like it. <laughs> but uh, so, yes, yeah, so you, you went to school with wearing a Life Teen shirt. Yeah, and since I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a big introvert, I wore a different shirt on top of the shirt <laughs> just because, you know, that way I could cover myself. Like, yeah, I'm wearing the shirt, but no one else can tell. And what if it gets dirty? I'm like, I'm thinking about excuses, you know, and we do right, that so right. much. Yeah. You know, when okay. it comes to the faith, like, yeah, I'm going to wear my medal, but I'm going to wear it on the inside so that no one can tell that I'm Catholic. Right. You know, like we, we do stuff like this and I do it because I can feel it in my heart. And so that's, that's kind of a, a good thing. I'm no longer at that point where I'm like ashamed or anything like that. If, if it comes to the faith, all you need to do is say, God bless you to me. And I start talking about how the Pope back in the day of the plague introduced the, the God bless you thing. And so, but at the time I was wearing my shirt on the inside, mm -hmm. you know, and I saw other students that went you to that exactly retreat. Wearing wearing your heart on your, you weren't wearing your heart on your sleeve. As, I, as a matter of fact, I was, very, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, fast forward, I'm a Catholic school teacher teaching religion. And, and this is actually the first, the first, uh, the first time that I, that I even announced it that to, to anyone that I'm, that I'm not going to be a Catholic school teacher anymore, you know, because certain needs are coming about and, and I, and I need to provide. I mean, that's one of our, our main things as men is we need to be providers for our family. And I was afraid because I'm not going to be talking about Jesus at work anymore. You, you know, get going thrown into the, you're getting thrown right into the breach, man. Yeah. Yeah. But I have a podcast with my brother. Mm -hmm. I go to mass every single Sunday. Mm -hmm. I've been going to daily mass. Um, it's just, I can't not follow God. You know, I can't stop talking about him. No one can stop me from talking about my God. But being, being in the school system now is going to be, is right where God wants you. You know, you're yeah, going to be I a witness so. to the light. You're going to that you're going to find opportunities here and there, especially among the your your colleagues. Yeah, you know, there's going to be there's there, that are things are going to open up and there and there'll be an opportunity for share for you to share the gospel. I mean, if not you, who, right? So. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and see, being an introvert, I'm I'm one of those people that's not going to be like, hey, I'm going to go out there and make you love Jesus. No, it's I I find that opportunities come to you. You know, opportunities are always coming but to you. But you're looking for them. Oh yeah, we have to be a team. We have alert. to be intentional about this, because no one's gonna no one's gonna do it for us. But the opportunities are gonna be there. You know, I find it like cooking with my kids. I love cooking. 
I, uh, getting into any, anything I want to come I over. I want oh, some yeah, good, absolutely. I want some good grinds. Absolutely. So okay. if you want, if you want some Mexican or, or American food, I love burgers. I love ribs. I love tacos. I love uh-huh. anything. Like I mean, anything food. So and you so, cook with your kids. So this is an opportunity yeah. for you to. Absolutely. Because I, it, it, I think about this and I'm like, well, the father can do all the evangelization he wants just by snapping his fingers and making everyone understand all the mysteries of the faith. But he chooses not to. I can make a meal and make it a really good meal, but I choose to involve my children. I choose to prepare and pre-cut certain things so that all they have to do is pour it. And as they get older, they get to do more of the prep work. But wow. That's but so we're building cool. we're building the meal together. And yeah, it's taking a little bit longer. Yeah, I could do it a lot faster by myself, but I choose to bring them in so that they can value the food, so that they can they can feel like they're part of the work because it's all about them anyway. This is La Familia. This is what and in Hawaii we understand this concept. Ohana. Yeah. Ohana. Uh, it's the it's there's just something real rich about this. Now I want to give you two minutes to speak uh, Spanish. To the, to the guys that are listening right now, or m- maybe the women, except for the guys that are listening uh, too macho to give their life to the Lord, or they want to, but there's, there's this hesitancy because they don't want to give up their, their so-called manliness. Can you speak to them for a minute and a half in in uh, In, in, in just Spanish. Spanish. Solo in Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, I love Spanish. I love this. All right, so here's a Spanish teacher coming you got, out. You got, you got two minutes. Muy bien, hermanos y hermanas. Estamos aquí platicando sobre, sobre tener reservaciones sobre dar nuestra vida a Cristo. Y cuando le damos nuestra vida a Cristo, no vivimos menos, no vivimos limitados, vivimos más, vivimos mejor y vivimos con propósito. Ciertas veces tenemos tenemos esa timidez o ese miedo que no vamos a vivir bien, que tenemos que sacrificar todo. Pero cuando damos algo, cuando sacrificamos algo, nuestro Dios es muy generoso y nos da mucho más de lo que damos y mucho más de lo que merecemos. No tengan miedo, hombres, mujeres. Yo espe- especialmente les hablo a los hombres porque no tenemos mucho liderazgo entre los hombres de la iglesia. I want to say to you guys, uh, my, my Hispanic brothers, uh, you remember in the Old Testament when God wrestled with Jacob. Jacob and God fought all night long. It finally got to the point where it was tough and Jacob was losing. So what do you do when you're losing a fight? You close distance and you hang on to your opponent. So every time he hits you, it doesn't hurt so bad. Eventually, Jacob said to God, I won't let you go until you bless me. And God punched him in the hip joint so that he kind of probably always had a limp. And then he blessed him with a new name, the name of Israel. My Hispanic brothers, you've been wrestling with God. You've been resisting God and it's and it, and it it's like when Jesus said to Paul is it hard for you to kick against the goad the goad is a sharp stick that uh, uh, in those days they would use to to stick into the back ribs of a of an ox that was pulling a cart to keep it going and it would kick at that and when it would kick the the goad would go in deeper stop kicking uh, at the goad because my, my Latino brothers are uh, I think I could say mis hermanos, mis hermanos. Mis hermanos, yes. Yeah, to just cling to God instead of keeping your distance and you're only going to get punched worse. Grab onto him for all your might and say, God, bless me. Forgive me. I want to stop resisting you and stop fighting. I want to start, I want to start being your fighter. I want, to, I want to fight with the fire of love. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking to Adrian Garcia from... Dude, Catholic dude, podcast. Dude. dude, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. We only have really manly men on our show, uh, but today we thought we'd make an exception. No, we only have really <laughs> manly guys on our show. And we have yes. Adrian Garcia. So, Adrian, I'm writing this new book uh, I'm working on right now called, I think it's going to be 24 Rules for Manliness, the Antidote to the Anti-Masculinity Scam. Yes. So can you give me, can you give me, I didn't give you any, any chance to think about this. Give me three things that you think are a rule for manliness. Just the three. First, well, just give me one to start with. Okay. 
So the first one is probably the most important one. Aim to be like Christ. Because, you know, what, how is it that men learn how to do anything? You know, it's the same thing as, as you're a martial arts guy, um, ninja black belt, you know, and and you don't learn by going on the Internet and finding finding formulas or whatnot. You have to live with the master. You have to learn from the master. Yeah, yeah, so I, one of the things that I remember in my martial arts class, which is just a part of a semester, I had to drop the class. So I'm, I'm not even a tangerine belt at this point. OK, <laughs> but I do remember something that bear of a man. Maybe, you know, bears have a have an influence in my life. Um, I'll, I'll also, share that in a little bit. Also, yes, I think that's the uh, meaning of the last name Garcia in the original Basque language. Bear. Oh, wait, Basque. That's a Basque name. Yeah, it's a oh Basque. Oh, my origin. gosh. And you know, I love the Basque mm -hmm. people. I go to Biritz, France, almost to surf there every almost every year. Yeah. Basque. Oh, my gosh. We were just so in that, Greece. That's the root. And there was mm -hmm. a Basque enclave of, uh, believe it or not, there's some Basque in the Greece in in the Greek area, too. They're all over the place. Dude, they they're escaped to Whitt they're the Whittier. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry. I got carried away. So, so yeah, no, go, go your, back. Your, your sorry, rules I, for manliness. Your rules for rules, manliness. The, the first one is to be like Christ. And, and it all has to do with that mentorship element, you know. And and we learn so much, so much from, from our mentors. And we learn so much from from those who live out that manliness that we're seeking as men. You know, and if we have a relationship with God, if we have a relationship with Christ, we know something about Christ because we can read about him in the Gospels and we can read that he got angry. You know, they paint him as this, this makeup wearing individual carrying a, a cute little sheep, but he was manly. He worked with the elements. He went out there. He preached. He had authority. If and, you see, if you see the Shroud of Turin, you know the the the. There's a couple statues. I've seen the yeah. one in Jerusalem, that are based on the three dimensional image that, as the cloth fell through the Christ's body, it wasn't a one dimensional image. It's three dimensional. If you look at that sculpture, mm -hmm. through like, he was a man. He was he was he he was muscular. Yeah. You know he was strong. He was lean. Um, yeah, he was man. So should a man be dangerous? A man should definitely be dangerous. You know, and Ramon says this all the time, it's like dangerous, but good, you know, because danger and, and all that is man, there is violence, there is there is that element of danger, there is there is anger at some point as well. And that is all part of who we are. However, the the, the challenge that that we can that we can take from that and looking at the life of Christ, we can emulate it is that we put that rage, that violence, that fire and we harness it and put it at the service of the beloved. That's how we are to live our manliness. That's yeah, how whether we our are beloved to live is God are. or our beloved is our wife, our children. All People of need the above, to know exactly. if they come into my house, they're going to face danger. Mm -hmm. If they intrude on my children, and I consider them intruding on me and intrusion on my wife and children too, if I'm out alone and someone wants to fight me, that's a danger to my children and my wife because I take care of them, I provide for them. Absolutely. Should a, is a, should a man be willing to fight physically if he needs to for his family? Absolutely. I mean, there's no doubt about that. We need to be always on guard because they count on us to protect them. Our daughters count on us to show them what it means to be a man, and our sons count on us to show them what it means to be a man. So it's not machoism. But it's not machoism. You, it's but, what should be expected of us. But you, people should know that you're dangerous. Even in the workplace, if someone is, we're not called to be doormats. You know, if you're in the workplace where you're going to be going to now, and, and people more of a secular environment, people are going to maybe say, make certain comments or things like that. Uh, there may be a time and a place where you, you, you make a statement or you make a stand. And, and, and part of being manly is being willing to pay the price for it too. Absolutely. So, okay, I got another question for you. Should a man know how to change the brakes on his car? <laughs> that, that's part of a conversation we were having earlier and, and ha having this brain that I have I, I, I tell my students I'm the ADD teacher and so I need OCD to control my ADD I want to do everything that's the thing about me it's like I want to do everything I want to get my hands in the kitchen I want to get my hands underneath the hood of the car I'm not that talented I do oil changes and now I do brake brake pad changes you did it dude uh, yeah, yeah so. my brother and i did it a couple of weeks ago we changed his rotors his brake pads we changed my brake pads i mean we got under that car my car's a little squeaky right now because i didn't have enough of that that 
that stuff you put on the on the contact parts of the brake pads. But oh, we did it. You know, we got it done. It took us hours. So you need <laughs> to have a to you need to, a, a, a man in some sense needs to be a MacGyver tool in the hands of the Lord. You, a man Absolutely. needs to know a man needs to know how to do stuff. Yes. It might be change the oil or change the car. Do you know how to uh, pick a lock? You to, know, I have to, a little lock pick. I, I don't know how to do that, but I need but to I mean, figure I mean, that I mean, you know, in case you get locked out or a friend gets locked out, uh, you know, what what, that's, what that's would be a couple skill. other uh, man skills? I mean, I'm really good at getting estimates when it comes to repairs. I'm going to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, oh. if I tried it, the last time I changed oil in my car was in the late, mid-90s probably, a long, <laughs> long time ago, and I remember changing the oil and there being oil all over the floor when I was done because I forgot to put the plug in. Oh, and then gosh. I thought, that's okay, and I cleaned it all up, and then I brought the other car in to change the oil, and there was oil all over again because I forgot to put the um, oil filter in. <laughs> and I, what's really bad is I thought, I thought this only had, had so many quarts that I kept pouring more and more quarts in. So, so, but, yeah, but, I mean, as a man, there's certain yeah. skills that you should be able to you should be able to take care of. Maybe it's changing the spark plugs or Absolutely. You know, we need, we need to have some basic skills. And I think we had a, man, it's been two years of the podcast. I can't even believe it. You know, we had a one episode where we go over certain skills that we should have. You and, did? And like what? Over, Give us yeah. a few. Give us a few. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember because it was such a long time ago. But How to tie I, a tie. How to tie a bow tie. Yeah, how to tie a tie. That That's definitely a skill. And, and that's one of the things that's like really close to my heart because when I was in high school and I was going to go to a job interview, I went to the restroom and I was so lost because I didn't have a dad to show me how Am I supposed uh, to do this? Yeah. And so uh, a janitor went in there and he took pity on me. No and showed kidding. That's what a beautiful person. Yeah. What a beautiful. What a to this beautiful, day, I don't know yeah. his name, but but I'm you never going to forget that. You get the job? I got the job. Oh, that is so cool. Okay, here's a question. Should mm-hmm. a man know how to dance? Ooh. Oh, should a man, man know how to dance with his, Should a man know how to dance with his woman? Yes. And, and here's the thing about that, and, and this is hard for me to say because my wife started off in college as a performing arts major <laughs> before she switched to psychology. And, and she said, oh, I know man. I was going to marry someone that had two left feet, but... Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's weird. I'm a Latino. I should know how to dance. This yeah, is, dude, I can't. Latinos can dance, dude. When my wife says, move your hips, you know, like if it's some sort of Latin sound, I go, I am. And she goes, you're just moving, like, your, you're moving your wrists, you know. <laughs> it's... <laughs> You know, and then she, of course, she can do the hula. But I think a man uh, must dance with his wife. He must yes. learn to dance enough to be able to dance with her because he may dread it, but it so makes it so important to the woman. Yeah. Yeah. And that's key right there. It's that if it's important to her, then you do it. You swallow your pride. You put all that rage that fire at the service of the beloved in everything you do even the mundane things you know you do and it. so yeah i mean she's gonna embarrass me every time because she's just so fancy with her footwork and i, I all she I needs just got is my, someone to be out step. there with her she just needs you to be yeah. out there with her right yeah exactly and she just i just do my one two step she does all her stuff and i just i'm i'm in awe of what a beautiful being god created and that she would give me the time of day yeah, me too. With my wife, when I go out and dance with her, I'm basically got the biggest grin on my face because I'm just, I, you know, we actually, you know, I'm a tandem surfer, right? So we actually will do tandem surfing lifts, which are very extreme when we dance, and it's kind of funny because we'll just oh, be dancing, nice. and then all of a sudden she just goes up in the air, right? And then I bring her down, and I've actually gotten better at it now. But remember, tandem surfing, you're standing still when you lift, so. They see me looking like a Neanderthal out there dancing, and then all of a sudden we do these incredible lifts, and then I'm a Neanderthal again, and they go, that doesn't compute. <laughs> Can they dance? So they think we know all these fancy dancing lifts, and they're just tandem surfing lifts. Hey, we got we to gotta wrap this up, Adrian. Got to get you back on our show again. This has been great. Absolutely. Uh, it may take us a year, but we got to get you back on. Let's tell Ramon again. Let's always give him the wrong time and date so he, Ramon never gets to show up. <laughs> but check it out. Uh, tell us about your podcast again. Where well, the Nude Catholic Podcast is uh, a couple of knuckle drags. It's, not, it's just... not nude Catholic. Not nude, not nude. It's dude Catholic. Dude Catholic. Dude. 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 Um, and so it's just a couple of knuckle dragging brothers like talking about the faith. We're, we're silly, you know, we, we do joke around a little bit. I always introduce the... I always introduce him with something he doesn't like. I do like a Chuck Norris joke on him, though. Oh, yeah? And, 
Yeah, he's getting tired of it. It's been two okay, years. Okay, you want to hear the worst Chuck Norris joke ever? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to introduce Chuck, a podcast with it. Okay, because I got to go because this is the last. I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. Chuck Norris goes into a feminist move, feminist meeting. He comes out with his shirt ironed in a, in a, in a fresh sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Cold. Okay. Before I get kicked <laughs> off of EWTN, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm talking to Adrian Garcia from the Dude Catholic Podcast. Dude. Go to our website, deepadventure.com. And don't forget to go to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak. And then you can automatically get the video version of these, uh, this radio show uh, on the Saturday before it airs. And if you go to our website and become a donor, I think it's a $20 level or above, you get to see this a month before it even airs on EWTN. Thanks. We'll see you next week. Until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. And will you do it with me? If I say Viva Cristo Rey, you'll say it back, Absolutely. Adrian. Absolutely. Viva Cristo Rey! Viva Cristo Rey! Amen. Thanks, Adrian. Okay, aloha. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com.